looks like a bar. <laughs> That's mine. Okay. And I've driven that from here to Singapore. Oh, um, I just sit here and be quiet then. And I went, <laughs> I went through uh, mudslides in Nepal and rock falls and but not four wheel drive. There's rear wheel drive. So okay. so no, I haven't driven four wheel drive, and okay. I've never had any proper training. So I've probably been doing it all wrong anyway. Well, once when it starts to flash, we'll push it a second time. This is going to okay. turn off our. Um, parking sensors, uh, seatbelt warning, so if you're shooting in a field you can get in and out without having to put the seatbelt on, uh, and it will also turn off our traction control. Right. So, okay. if you are ready, yep. just, there's a little button on the side of the gear lever, so thumb on that button. That one? Yeah, back of your foot on the brake. So press and hold that? Yep. Yeah. That's it, then we're ready okay. to go. So drop the handbrake down. And let's just put it into drive, yep. yeah? And we're going to head up. And it's um, auto, left. so I don't need to worry no. about it rolling back. So then it's just stop and go. Yeah. Easy. Cool. Up to the left. Up to the left, yeah. Just continue along this track. And normally when we're off-roading we'll just be going quite slowly. But we are going to have a part <laughs> where we are going to need a bit of a momentum in the okay. first field we come to. So round to the left again. Okay. This would be fun to do in the beetle, wouldn't it? Just explain again, if you wouldn't mind, the setting you put her into. It's the off-road setting, did yep. you say? off-road, so it disables parking sensors, seatbelt warning and traction control. So Fiona, we're just going to, by these two trees, mm -hmm. make a left down here. Down there? Yeah, yeah. need to indicate we're on off-road. <laughs> so if we just stop here, we're just going to explain what we're going to do. Yep. So, there are a couple of little bumps in the track that we're going to go through, and then we're going to lock the centre differential, which we can do when we're moving okay. anyway and then we're just going to need some momentum as we go up the hill. When we get to the top of the hill we're going to do a right-handed hairpin Okay. and then we'll come back down this side as you can see the other car just to our right coming down. Okay. So So pretty much following the, the tracks yeah. that are there because they're dug in pretty deep. They are. See this um, is where it differs to the beetle because with the beetle I'd sort of power through but I would be avoiding the ruts, I'd yeah. be looking for my own dry path. Because you've got a lot less weight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's only two-wheel drive. That's it. So, okay. So I tend to sit on top in the beetle, but yeah. with this you're looking no, deep you're down look to in. the solid. So it's so going to start rocking about and moving about, but just keep the the, the okay. power. Keep so power keep for commitment. it. Yeah. So, okay, so where you go when you're ready. So just nice and gently until we get over the two big potholes. So okay. just coming up here. That's it. That's it now. <laughs> Accelerating away. Keep going a little faster, a little faster, keep going, a little more power, a little more power, a little more power, a little more power, keep going, keep going, a bit more power, a bit more power, a bit more power. That's it, so climb up, keep the power going, keep the power going. That's it, and then, and then round keep to the going right. there, round to the right. That's it, so straighten the wheel up. We've got our wheel indicator angle there, so we can keep going now. And then we're going to come down the <laughs> left hand side of the field. Just where we are now, so a little slower. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. We've got quite a bit of right hand lock on. So straighten up. And I aim to go into the corner and climb out. So over here? Yeah, over into that corner. Over that way. And then we're going to come around and climb out to the left. Okay. That's it. So as we turn in, a bit of power. Oh, I'm not going to go power, power, power. Straighten the lock. Power, 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 power. Keep it climbing. Okay, we'll just go back a little bit. So just so squeeze the trigger. Push it forward. Forward for reverse. That's it. Okay. So we'll just back up a little bit. Yeah. And then a bit of left hand down. So yeah. what we'll do is we'll put that rear diff lock and then in. Into drive. Into drive, yeah. yeah. I'll just engage the rear diff. Okay. That's it, so power. So I'm not giving it enough okay. power then. So again, just if we go into reverse with left hand down, so what we'll do is we'll sort of go into the bottom, so keep going left hand down, hard left, hard left, hard left, but all the way there. That's yeah. It we've got that's it so just okay. go into drive that's it yep and then just and we more can power. see okay, that's it go on go 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 keep going keep going keep going keep going keep going keep going keep going, keep going. Keep going. okay and back down again do exactly the same but don't come off the throttle okay. and just push it forward 
you know, I mean, what I'm wary of is just you start slivering around a lot on the mud, and I'm just a bit wary of where I'm going. Don't worry. <laughs> That's it. Time to drive. Okay, so more power. Yeah. So go on. Off we go. Yes. That's it. <laughs> so just gently down here because we've obviously got loads wanna, of mud in the tire treads. I didn't want to now. overpower it and end up in that tree that was in front of us. You've also got a big brake pedal to stop you doing that. Brakes! Brakes! So 90 left, 90 right. Okay. A little slab up. Just about build up the mud in the tires. Yeah. Round to the right. And then when we get to the top of this crest up ahead, we're just going to stop, pop the car into low range, and then we're just going to do down the hill in some big ruts. So just at the top here, we're going to stop. Okay. So stop, 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 stop. Okay. So we're going to go into neutral, mm -hmm. into low range back into drive then we're going to go hard left into the field okay so hard left hard left no, left now left oh now. into the field yeah sorry i thought we were down no. that track yeah. so. so we're going to go over and get into those yeah. latch into the mud yeah once we fall in it's just going to get in the, <laughs> get in the ruts that's it so just keep an arm where your wheels are so, so just let okay. the back come in yeah Straddle it a little so it goes down a little bit sideways, but that's not a problem. So, keep going. So that's going to fall in. And off we go. This is exactly what I wouldn't do in the beetle, because in the beetle I would be grounded out on that. <laughs> yeah, we've got over uh, nearly 11 inches of, uh, of ground clearance in this one, so. Yeah. 216 somewhat metal clearance. So just after the final silver birch we're going to make a right turn. Up here? The other right. Yeah. Into this yeah. side slope. I was just impressed nice I knew slowly. what a silver birch was. So just nice and slowly down here. Okay. That's it. And again keep the steering wheel straight ahead. Keep going straight down. So. A little slower, you don't want any, just want to walk it down over here so you don't want speed at all. Okay. Very, very different technique to, to in the bar. Yeah, once you're in these uh, in these ruts basically, you're just going to get taken along with it. Yeah. Are you changing the wheel angle? Are you, can you adjust something that I'm seeing on the screen? That's showing you where the front wheels are pointing. Okay. So obviously in the old days you need to get out and have a look where the wheels are, but now <laughs> with technology we can Keep see. Yeah. It's sunny today. I know. So after the life preserver we're going to follow it round to the left. Okay. Not hard left then. Not quite. <laughs> it's good at wading but not that good. Turn the heater down a little bit. You're spoiling me, I'm not used to having heating. These modern cars you see, they have these <laughs> conveniences. So you just sort of take it slow. Yeah, so you said he just yeah. to give the time, the suspension enough time to recover. Yeah. So you've got all four wheels on the ground giving you traction, steering, braking, yeah. more importantly, if you're going down. Total opposite to the Baja where it can tap to power through stuff. Yeah, so. no, literally, we've got so yeah. much traction in this, it's just literally crawl along. So, just at the end of the track, by, uh, past the bush, we're going to turn right. Yeah. We are going to go into a little bit of water. We can wade up to 800 mil on this. This isn't anywhere near that, so we're not going to be uh, need to do anything. So, once we get in, just follow it round to the left. Not the right. You can go right, but I didn't bring my <laughs> water or wings with me. So, so how deep is it just? Probably about 250, something like that. Okay. Not too bad. Yeah, it's enough that we can push a bit of a bow wave, but it's yeah. not going to 
much lovely. And then we'll go all around and up and over these two little man-made moguls. And again, just climb up really slowly, it's not about speed. If we've got that much traction, we can probably not stop really halfway up. Not looking at taking off. Right. So again, just nice and gently. Okay, you can see how much traction we've got. Can't see so where I'm going. That's it, just keep it straight. No need to worry if I'm panicking. Right, just crawl it up. So a bit of right hand down. A bit of right hand down. So turning right as we drop off. Oh, okay. to the left and when we get the car straight we'll just come to a stop we'll go back into high range uh, and unlock the centre diff. So just stop here. Yeah that's fine. Yeah. So then we're just going to go into neutral. Mm -hmm. Yep. Back up into high. Mm -hmm. Across to unlock the centre diff. Back to drive again and then we can okay. proceed along the track. So that locks the diff. Yeah so left to right locks line. the diff. Yeah. Um, up and down gives high and low ratio. Okay. And for like someone who's never driven a uh, four-wheel drive yep. off-road like this before, I've, I've driven land drivers but not not ever oh, really in, in that. <laughs> so um, explain to me when you would want to use high and low. Basically, if you're if you're off-roading, um, yeah. if you're doing any climbing or descending, you'd probably go into uh, low range. Uh -huh. uh, anywhere that's not sort of Tarmac Macadam Road, really. Um, okay. You know, or, or anything that's slightly soft or loose, whereas this is quite hard packed underneath. Mm -hmm. It's fine, we can just drive along in a normal mode. Yeah. But if you're ever unsure what you're driving on or what's underneath you, you'll probably go uh, to start with in low range with just a centre diff locked. Um, and then in this vehicle, you, you do have the options of rear diff lock and front diff lock, so we can lock everything up. Um, you know, just bring that. You wouldn't bring them all in at the same time. I would say just use your centre diff. Uh, you do need the extra traction. That's when you can start thinking about using the rear diff, and possibly the front diff. But normally, it's just rear diff and centre diff. Mm -hmm. Okay. When we get to the bottom, we're going to turn left. So at the moment the, the car is deciding best where to put the power if it's an open differential. Yeah. If we lock the centre diff it's going to put power 50-50 front and rear, so exactly the same power front to rear. Uh, if we lock the rear, so but then the, the power can work across the axle. If we lock the rear diff it's going to send 50% of the power to the back but 100% or 50% again either side so you're going to have that rear diff locked, it's all, almost like a solid axle. Yeah. Oh, hello. You picked a wonderful site to do this. It's okay, the, the off-road could be a little bit more challenging, but yeah, it's, it's okay. Could it? Okay. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that literally just touched the surface as well. Really? Uh, yeah, when we're in, so just before the red traffic, I'm going to turn left. Yeah. When we were up in Cumbria, we had about an 80 foot, uh, 27 degree climb on bedrock. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Okay. I'll just take a bit of tree with us. Yeah, that's right. That's what we're built for. Right. On the left. So yeah, if we just park up behind the guys on the right, on the right, on the right, on the right. Let's just push P on top of the gear lever. And that's in part. Handbrake on and then turn mm -hmm. it off on the key. Oh. And it's as simple as that. That's it, mate. I think so, yeah, to me. So you've got heated, heated seats, seats, temperature, fan, auto, that sort of thing. Yeah. You've got front and rear screen heaters, not screen heaters, but turns of demisters. Demisters. Yeah. Uh, air conditioning um, and uh, recirculation. So, again, mm -hmm. and then the radio and uh, park assist and, and stop start. Stuff you might need yeah. on the road. Up here, you've got your off road panel. Okay, so mm -hmm. here you've got a stability control off, 
downhill assist and you've got uh, off-road button and waiting mode. Now off-road turns off things like parking sensors, seat belt warning, doors open. Uh, and then the waiting mode turns off electric fans. So we'll show right. you where you don't want to turn them off. And here you've got some pre-wired switches. switches yeah. Which is one of the best elements of it. Obviously you've got pre-wired, uh, as I say, power. And in the other cars you've got more switches and you've got external power as well. So you can have pre-wired. So if you want to get okay. going, we'll, we'll yeah. need to get going. Okay, no, speedo. Obviously, yep. fuel and, and gear you're in, things like that. Mm -hmm. With the ZF gearbox, you've got a button on the right hand side, squeeze that and pull it back to get drive. That's it, just a gentle squeeze. There we go, you've got in one D, and then when you're ready, we'll head out. Okay. Oh, you just do the mirror. Yeah. You've got the, the last go, put the sun boys are down, so if you don't want to do that, that's fine. We had some sunshine just now, yeah, that's it. Did, now the steering is quite low geared, so you'll need to find, you'll need to get the steering on early to get round bends and things. Okay. And you seem to put a lot of steering turns in. Yeah. So, and then back it, and what you'll need to do is feed it off again as well. Yeah. So um, okay. it's not as uh, prompt self-centering as something like a rack and pinion. Mm -hmm. So it's because it's a steering box on this one. For a right. board. What was the reason to do that in the design? With the live axle, it's not you, you, the rack doesn't really work with the with the with the live axle because you've got the live axle moving a lot, and then you've got the steering as well. Okay. So uh, to, to get the amount of travel, yeah, they use the steering box. Uh, that's my take on it. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just something to get used to, isn't it? Something because to get it's used a to. Bit different. Yes, and with the pickup. And this is where you'll need to wind the steering on and then back off again. Yeah, lovely. There you go. And then we're good to go. It's quite a um, you go over the brown and there's a sharp left turn, okay. which is part of the road, but uh, Yeah, that is quite a sharp left turn. Yes. <laughs> So uh, maybe teaching you what you know, but obviously BMW engine, straight six, three litre petrol or diesel, um, ZF eight speed gearbox. So what was the idea behind creating the Grenadier? Just to create a... a uh, he wanted a, a Defender, he wanted to build Defender. When, yeah. So when the Defender production line was closed, he went to Land Rover and said, can I buy the facility? And they said no. Mm. And he went, fine, I'll build my own. So. He went to um, the company in, in Austria that builds the uh, G-Wagon yeah. and they basically got involved in the design of the chassis and the body and all that sort of thing. So hence why you've got um, you know, the rugged chassis with the 12 year yeah. warranty and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, because there is, a, externally there's a, there's a similarity certainly with the uh, Defender. Yeah. Would we not say that? Nice two wheel drive machine ahead of us. Yeah. One horsepower. Yeah. Very clever. Considering what we've just done in this car or vehicle yeah. off road, yeah. it's remarkably smooth yes. on road. It's very well planted. It is. You know, it, 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 it is good on road and it is good off road. You know, I was expecting something more agricultural. Yes. Well, all the door seals are double door seals, so the pod that we're sat in is both waterproof and dustproof. So again, and also that helps with noise reduction. Different levels of specification. The one we were in earlier had sunroofs. Yep. And the Fieldmaster comes with sunroofs. Okay. That's the top of the range. Okay, the Trialmaster, you can basically specify anything in anything. So we're in a commercial now, a 5 seat commercial, and you could have the sunroofs, and this right. is actually got this is a commercial with leather trim and heated seats. So the so, commercial being the, the base unit. Yeah, the base okay. unit. But also we're limited. Just what I see what That's you fine, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I thought I'd keep quiet. <laughs> you listen to the noise then. Um, so the 
This is obviously limited to 50 mile an hour on A road, 60 on dual carriageways and 70 on motorways yeah. because of the commercial classification. Uh, whereas the trial master and uh, field master are not. So uh, they're under a different tax, uh, tax bracket as well. So initial impression. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's um, fun off road, but yeah, it's quite civilised on road as, as well. Um, definitely very comfortable. Take a look at this one. I thought it was absolutely remarkable what it was dealing with off road. Yes. Yeah. Considering how yeah, it really muddy is. it was and the depth of the ruts. And it's just the ability to understand what she can do and yes. setting it up accordingly. Yes, that's right. Yes. It's quite it's nice because you've got manual input. You don't just go, oh we're gonna drive it and the car will sort it out. It seems to be substance over style as well. Totally. Um, yeah. and therefore more acceptable for those that actually want to use it yeah. as opposed to cruising. Yes, yeah, it's it's a useful vehicle and that's really the, the sum up of it, I think. You know, it's um, capable and comfortable I think to yeah. sort of. Yeah.